Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I have the great pleasure of introducing uh, Ben Wallace, MP, who is our Minister for Security. Um, I'm slightly wary of talking at any event now. I was in the back of a taxi the other day, uh, talking to the taxi driver, and he said, uh, he said, you've got a very nice voice, sir. He said, it's like a radio voice. And I was rather pleased. And then he said, you sound like Nigel Farage. So, um, so I'm very wary of, uh, very wary of speaking. Uh, I'm delighted you've all come to this exhibition. It's the start, I think, of a groundswell of an exhibition that will grow to a similar scale as DSEI. Uh, and it will be covering all aspects of security and indeed links across towards defense. And I think that is very important at the moment. Uh, we've been up and down in terms of the terrorist threat, but there is no doubt whatsoever that at the moment, with the squeezing of Daesh out of Mosul and out of Raqqa and their loss of territory, that they are desperate to actually cause more damage globally. One only needs to go on their various websites to see this desperate, almost pleas to people to go out and cause mayhem in all of our societies. So I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that the terrorist threat actually is, grating, is getting greater. And of course, in this country at the moment, it is at the level of severe. And that means an attack is likely. Um, and I always say to people, if you had been to your heart surgeon, and he said to you, it's quite likely you'll die tomorrow, it would really focus your attention. And it is a serious threat. And therefore, it's important for all of us to be able to exchange ideas, to be able to talk about the things that so many of you are experts at in terms of details of security. And there is no doubt that within this hall, we have some of the best practitioners of security in the world and exchange ideas which will enable us all to be safer and to live our lives normally. The terrorists have won if we can't live our lives normally, if we can't go out, enjoy ourselves, go to work, bring up our families, then the terrorists have won. And it's only because of people like you talking together and working at these things that we're able to protect our society in a way that enables this to happen. Now, we are very, very fortunate today in having uh, Ben Wallace MP here. Um, by definition, he's a decent chap because he was in the army, so that means he must be a decent chap. Um, he has a lot of experience in this area, having been involved in Northern Ireland in the past, uh, and he's, so he brings uh, knowledge to this actual role of being a minister. And uh, I have to say, when I was a minister for three years, it always amazed me how most ministers, and you absolutely bugger all about the area they were responsible for. Um, he knows a lot about this area, and I think it'll be great to hear him speak. Ben, thank you very much, and we look forward to hearing you. Uh, thank you, Lord West. Um, on the way here, I did something that my officials never like, and Lord West will notice this. I looked at the speech and thought, well, actually, I'm going you know, to cut it a bit shorter and I'll change it. So um, this will probably be the first time my officials hear the speech, which uh, if you ever watch uh, In the Thick of It, you'll realise it's not something that a minister usually does. Uh, Lord West and I are very lucky, actually, that we are both doing jobs, or we did jobs, that we had a background in and worked in. I just sat down next to Andy Amory, who I last saw, I realised, 12 years ago when I was working at Kinetic and Andy Amory was a superintendent leading uh, on the Olympic bid. And that's the great thing about here. My officials today keep dragging me away from the uh, stalls. I, uh, I am a complete anorak in the world of defense and security, and I could pretty much spend most of my day here looking at most of the stands. So uh, it's always difficult for time. And I want to welcome uh, everyone who's obviously come to this show. I think it's incredibly important that we recognize security uh, in the sort of mix, in what private and public sector can do working together. I think it's incredibly important that we recognize that security has its rightful place alongside defense. You know, it, it is not the poor relation security. Security is very much one of the UK's global offerings and certainly is where we lead the world in many, many areas. And I'm delighted that there are a number of international visitors here today as well. I mean, the threat is real. Uh, Lord West alluded to it today. You know, Daesh is on the move. Daesh is obviously under pressure in Syria. 
Uh, and that poses a direct threat to us today because those fighters, those fighters who will eventually return here may want to or probably will carry on their campaign of terror or indeed those people who now can't get to Syria will be looking at ways to attack us in our own homes or in our own public places. We've, we've seen from the attacks in Nice and Brussels and Paris that the terrorist of today is very quick to use a whole range of weapons or instruments against members of the public, the worst obviously being recently the Nice attack and the use of a truck. Uh, and I think that means that the security sector and the government has even greater challenges to deal with. And it's to you, we all look for solutions, is to learn from what you have out here at, at exhibitions like this about how you can help us solve those problems. And some of the other uh, guys haven't gone away. Al-Qaeda is still prominent and uh, don't, don't be fooled for a minute that because everyone's talking about Daesh uh, that Al-Qaeda has gone somehow into retirement. They too uh, have plans for us uh, and I think that is another area. And the dissident Republican threat in Northern Ireland, we shouldn't forget that. Some of the most capable uh, terrorists in the United Kingdom uh, are the uh, dissident Republicans, the skills they unfortunately learnt over 30 years, they are still there. Uh, and I think uh, that is another thing that we have to make sure we cover uh, across uh, the government. And so that's the challenge we face. And our response to it, uh, I think, has been a very successful response so far. The contest strategy that is now quite a mature strategy and the government is involved in uh, reviewing it as we speak. Uh, and hopefully that refresh will be done by the end of the year. Breaking down really how we deal with the terrorist threat into the four P's, prevent, pursue, protect and prepare. And really in the last three, protect, pr pursue and prepare is where you come in uh, and certainly the issue about how do we make ourselves less vulnerable, how we deal with something when something happens, uh, how do we make sure uh, that we never uh, let it happen again. Those are the areas uh, that is so important to us at the moment. Uh, and I think that's why uh, it's important uh, that we, as I've said earlier, we, we learn about the attacks that we are under today and help you understand what the threat is because it's all very well me saying what are your solutions. The government needs to be better at communicating the threat to you so you can plan and make your investment decisions as well. But it's also important, it's not, a, it's, not, it's not just good enough to have a strategy, we have to have the legal framework to allow our forces of law and order to actually then get on and do the job and prepare and I'm delighted that yesterday the Investigative Powers Act became, uh, got royal assent and became law. That's a modern framework uh, for the modern age, updating the powers that our security services have and our police uh, to tackle the threat uh, and the use of the internet, for example, uh, and the use of modern equipment by our opponents and terrorists to make sure that we do our best uh, to catch them. And I, I'd have to thank all the major political parties that contributed to what was a truly collaborative solution to this. Uh, people thought it would be impossible, uh, and I have to say it was certainly one of the biggest pieces of legislation that's gone through the House in near history, with I think over 2,000 amendments to the legislation, which showed uh, not only the public interest, uh, but also the uh, importance the government chose to making sure it was a collaborative approach. And I heard Lord West and some of his colleagues on the other benches support it, uh, and I think people shouldn't think this is a a piece of legislation that has come without support. It's cross-party and it really does help our agencies get to grips with the threat we face. So we know the threat, we have responded to the challenge and we've put in place the legal framework. But we need to go into ongoing investment. The government can't just do that, we've got to invest. And that's why in the SDSR in 2015, uh, the government committed to increase spending on counter-terrorism from £11.7 billion to £15.1 billion over five years. And that's in addition to the £1.5 billion a year joint security fund to pay for increased capabilities for military and intelligence agencies, including for counter-terrorism, a £2.5 billion investment over five years in a much more capable global security and intelligence network. And the new five-year cyber security strategy is now in place, uh, which will be backed by £1.9 billion of transformational investment. And it does set out our ambitious policies to protect the UK in cyber. One part of my job is cyber crime, uh, and it is, it is quite terrifying the effectively scale of cyber crime 
committed not only against individuals, but against companies uh, and indeed government organizations and the critical NAFTA infrastructure. And it is something that is not going away. And the message on cybercrime that I can give to all the CEOs out here is make sure you take protection of the data that you hold. Make sure that you recognize the responsibilities, I'm afraid, that you have. It's not good enough for banks, for example, just to rely on the government. They have an obligation to their customers to take the correct steps. And they should be investing in security in the same way uh, government does. And we want to protect that global internet, but we do want it to remain obviously free, open, peaceful, and secure. And that is in all our interests, both economically and uh, for uh, security. Defense and security accelerator, I went to the recent launch recently uh, back in December, and that would be an important enabler for our defense innovation fund. The fund, which equates to approximately 800 million pounds over the next 10 years, will hopefully broaden the scope of innovation and whether technology and structure, processes, and in behavior. But I'm very keen that the word accelerator isn't forgotten. I remember being on the other side of this lectern, bidding for funds from government uh, and trying to get our innovative ideas and kinetic accelerated. And that's important. It's the accelerator bit that counts in that fund. And I'll be making sure as it rolls out that what it actually does is accelerate your ideas into the marketplace so that we can exploit it uh, and deploy it. And the first challenge call is going to be, I think, in the next few weeks on that. Uh, and I'll make sure that we keep a strong eye. My department has just committed 11 million pounds for the next four years to establish the Joint Security and Resilience Center, JSARC, and it's a flexible capability where the government and the security sector, which includes academia, we're gonna to work together in partnership to respond to both urgent and long-term threats to a national security uh, opportunities to support the growth center. That's going to be, we hope, based in Cambridge. Uh, and the main key for that is to have a single point of entry uh, access for industry into government's complex security machinery of government. And I think that shows that the government is determined to put the money behind the initiatives. Um, and I think if you go around today, you'll see some of the highlights that I've seen already today. Uh, the Securing Crowded Places demo, for example, uh, that was some of the areas I worked in back in 2003. And I was delighted to see some of the technology that I had been at the early stages of developing, the millimeter wave uh, scanners being used today as you came in. And I think if you go and take a look at that, you'll see how we're trying to solve some of the solutions and how you as industry actually have the better answers often uh, than we do. And aviation security, that is always an ongoing threat. Uh, and uh, we know, I know from what I see every day, that the terrorist is out there right now thinking about ways around the aviation security that we have currently in place. And that's why a 25 million pound innovation fund alongside the Home Office and the DFT has already been, uh, is in action. And we've just put out a call for two million pounds uh, of research. And uh, behind you is Border Force, who have uh, come with a display of uh, tusks and uh, obviously uh, a whole load of wildlife uh, crime, I think, uh, uh, confiscations. But that shouldn't detract from the, the issue that one of our number one priorities is going to be the integrity of our border. Whatever happens with Brexit, the integrity of our border is somewhere where we are vulnerable and we need to do more work on. So I would certainly urge you to have a look at uh, Border Force, talk to the people there, find out what their worries are, but also recognize that you know, we as government recognize that the integrity of the border, maintaining it uh, and making sure we collect the intelligence we need, making sure we head off people actually getting to our border is one of our number one uh, priorities. And then for those of you uh, wanting to increase your expert, exports, I'm delighted that the Prime Minister set up the Department for International Trade. I won't tell you what the nickname used to be when I was the Overseas Director at Kinetic uh, for uh, the DTI, uh, but it didn't really link to trade. And I think it's, it's come a long way in the sort of 15 years that I remember it. And you know, we're out there trying to support you making your exports. Uh, I'm delighted that DSO is you know, firing at all cylinders, uh, and we are determined that uh, trade abroad is something that is going to be maintained as the government's main uh, sort of economic priority. And I'm delighted that over the last year, exports have risen from 4.5% to 5.3% uh, in the security sector. And that's something to be proud of. Remember, you know, we are one of the best security exporters in the world. We want to maintain that position. Uh, and I hope that throughout the world, one of the best ways to effectively advertise that is who your clients are. I remember going to a Middle East company, country to, uh, to uh, pitch for work. 
And one of the best ways to persuade the customer that it was something that they wanted to buy was look at who our other clients are. When I could put on the screen that number 10 was one of our clients, that uh, the security services were one of our clients, that makes a difference in the export market. That's the sort of blue ribbon customers that I hope that if you work with us here, you, you can use that or lever that uh, to get more business elsewhere. Um, I'm certainly going to do my best to get around as many of the stalls and the delegates uh, today. Unfortunately, I will be dragged off to do uh, work elsewhere in the Home Office. But I think it's a great uh, exhibition. I'm delighted that the government is supporting it, uh, and we look forward to doing so hopefully in the future. Um, I think it's delight we're going to have a range of guests. Liam Fox, the Trade Secretary, is coming uh, later for a visit, uh, and I know a number of NATO uh, individuals are coming as well. Um, but I think the government takes security incredibly seriously. It's the one thing that does keep me awake at night. Uh, I wake up, uh, there are two things I say in the morning. Thank God I'm not the immigration minister. And the second thing I say is, uh, you know, I'm the security minister and that is something that uh, actually uh, I'm delighted to do, but I'm also delighted that the government and industry are going to have to work together to solve that. Because in the end of the day, the 21st century, you, the private sector, will provide those solutions, probably often better than we will as government. I don't come with any uh, preconceived ideas. And the main challenge is for us to communicate our needs and to you to communicate your great innovation. And I want innovation to be at the heart of it. I've worked in aerospace. I, I, know, I know how powerful and successful the primes are. And they have a very successful uh, and a proper role to play. But I also want innovation to come to the floor for innovation that is going to often keep us one step ahead of the criminals and the terrorists. So thank you very much. Enjoy today. And I hope to see you around.